uh, hi everyone welcome to the daily newspaper analysis of the shankarayas academy brought you by the civil speedia team and this video is for the current affairs for the date of 16th of november 2024 so let us look into what are the articles discussed and having a brief introduction about it. So before that there is a very small announcement. The pre-storming session of the UPSC prelims test series of 2025 would be starting from 21st of November 2024. So interested aspirants are welcome to join for the admission process. And also Shankaraya's academy bringing in the initiative of Chakra which brings in a very analyzed uh, test series for the current affairs sessions along with the test series there would be discussions for it so interested aspirants can join the session now let us move on to the topics for discussion for today's uh, video first article talks about the shared capital of haryana and punjab chandigarh where there are again fight over it and this article is from the hindu next is next article talks about the rice cultivation in india and this article is about from, sorry is from Indian Express and they also talk about the recent trends according to the Indian market for rice cultivation and finally the third article talks about the inflation for the Indian economy and this article is from Live Mint. So without any much delay let us move into the articles discussion. Now let us move on to the first article for the day. This article is about the rice cultivation in India. So the context is India's rice exports have surged in that is it has increased in October 2024 reaching almost 1000 million dollars that is almost 85 percentage rise from October 2023. So in light of this topic we need to see the basics that is the foundations for what is rice cultivation in India and also let us move on to the uh, trends or the export statistics when it comes to rice cultivation. So now before moving into what is rice cultivation, we should know the basic idea of major crops of India. So the major idea for the generation of major crops for a country like India is for one of the reasons called growing population to address the growing population and along with having a balanced food security, we need crops associated with building the nation as well as the economic development. So also major crops are known for its raw material especially in agro based industries. So the major crops of India would be wheat, rice, millet and maize and other uh, beverage crops would be tea and coffee, fiber crops would be jute and cotton and uh, plantation crops would be sugarcane. In along with the major crops, rice is one of the most important and in one of the most staple crop of India, especially in the region of tropical to subtropical of India. Now moving on to the basics of rice, rice or paddy is cultivated across India predominantly in the eastern and southern and northern regions. So major rice producing states include West Bengal, Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh and Bihar. When needing the climatic requirements or the conditions, it thrives in hot uh, humid climates with temperature ranging from 21 degree to 37 degree Celsius and requires 100 to 200 centimeter of rainfall. So it is a Karif crop dependent on the monsoon season. Looking into the Karif crops uh, calendar, usually it will be planted during the monsoon season that is the June of the month and the harvest would be at most to September to the October month. And looking into the irrigation, so mostly uh, rice is a rain fed crop and around 60% of India's rice cultivation is rain fed while the rest relies on irrigation systems. And it can grow in soils like alluvial and clayey soils which can retain the water. As of 2000 of 23 to 24, in recent times only, Telangana has become the largest producer of rice in India contributing to almost 160 lakh metric tons which is 12 percentage of the country's total rice production. So it is also followed by countries like Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, Punjab and Chhattisgarh. So there is not a need for us to know the exact amount of the LMT or the lakh metric tons but we should know the arrangements of the states when it comes to the rice production in India. So now moving on to India's position in rice production and exports. 
India is the second largest producer of rice, so they are one of the global producer after China, contributing significantly to the global rice output. So together, India and China account for almost 50 percentage of world's rice production. Here, they are also the global export leader. B, as India is the world's largest rice exporter, accounting for 33 percentage of global rice exports in 2023. And we are in competitors with com uh, countries like Thailand and Vietnam also. They are also one of the rice producing countries. Now looking into the recent export trends. So as of 2024, which is from April to October, the rice exports have reached almost 1000 million. That is 85 percentage increase. And the exports have rose almost 5 percentage in 2023 to 24. The Of course, the factual numbers will not be that uh, important, but we should know at least by knowing the factual numbers, we can understand the trends between the year only. Even in starting of the year, which is April, and to the end of the uh, year, which is the October of 2024, there has been vast differences with the rice production, and there are a lot of factors contributing to it, and we would be seeing it now. So, what are the factors uh, influencing this export growth would be first is policy reforms. So, ban on uh, non-Basmati white rice which was uh, recently lifted in September. So, the reason on having a ban on non-Basmati white rice to address the domestic inflation for a country India. So, in given to the demand of rice, the prices have been increased a lot. So, there has been curbing on the export of uh, uh, non-basmati white rice but now recently in 2024 September there has been better than expected uh, production yield as well as uh, price stability. So now the ban has been lifted and again export duties were reduced or eliminated from September 2024 along with minimum export price have also been removed. So, not only for domestic reasons, but also for a lot of global reasons, we brought in this ban, we brought in uh, restrictions, price restrictions, export restrictions when it comes to rice cultivation uh, due to the global demand. Because increasing global reliance on India due to the competitive pricing and quality as well as reduced supply from other nations. So, on a major demand, India would be one of the countries for preference when it comes to rice cultivation and rice preferences during the exports. So, countries felt it brings in shortages in their uh, international market prices and at the same time, uh, there were a lot of diplomatic pressures. So, these were the reasons where they had brought in the ban. So, before the ban, India contributed almost 40 percentage of global rice exports. So, the share temporarily uh, dipped due to the restrictions imposed and also due to the monsoons and marginal production decline and now it is stable and the inflation has been controlled. So, in conclusion, we can see how the rice export trends highlight uh, the resilience and the global competitiveness were supported by a lot of policy interventions also. So, as global demand surges, India's position is always leading rice export remains important for its for our agriculture sector and for our economy predominantly. So, I hope there has been a coverage on what is rice cultivation, the recent trends and an idea of the foundation of uh, the crop rice. Now, let us move on to a prelims practice question for this article. Consider the following statements. India is the largest producer and exporter of rice in the world. Telangana became uh, the largest rice producing state in India in 2023-24 to 24, and Basmati rice accounts for over 50 percentage of India's total rice exports. Only option second is right. It has recently in 2023 only Telangana has become the largest rice producing state in India. Now, moving on to the second article from the live mint which talks about the inflation of india especially by the uh, report rating agent sorry report rating agency called moody's which is very prevalent in uh, every uh, every countries so if this article has been in both indian express as well as in hindu so 
uh, aspirants who doesn't have subscription for live mint this article is also there in indian express as well as hindu so just we'll just have a common look on what the article talks about it talks about the modi's assessment where it highlights india's economic outlook stating that inflation is expected to be moderate placing the country in a favorable position that is known as sweet spot so it mentions uh, global challenges such as financial inflation geopolitical tensions trade protection uh, which can impact the g20 economies also at the same time it also talks about growth momentum where it is projected to slow for advanced and emerging markets which can be beyond 2024 so in light of this article let us see a lot of basics on what is inflation is inflation is the rate at which the general price level of a goods and services in an economy can rise over a period of time decreasing the purchasing power of money so in layman terms or in a very simple terms it is nothing but uh, it is the increase of the price level of particular goods which can sometimes decrease its value so moderate inflation is considered normal in a growing economy but when there is excessive inflation that is excessive price ri- uh, rise uh, it can harm the economic stability now i hope uh, what we can understand what inflation means so inflation is nothing but rise of the general price level of goods that is we can say that goods in the basket and having a decrease in their purchasing power of the money which is the value of the products so let us see how inflation can be measured inflation is typically measured using the price indices where it tracks the changes in the prices of selected basket of goods and services over time so it is nothing but inflation is usually measured by keeping track of the prices of everyday items like the groceries clothes and other things which people regularly buy so if the overall prices in the basket go up over time it shows inflation is happening so the first uh, met, uh, index through which we can measure inflation is consumer price index this tracks how the prices of everyday items of, of like food rent clothing can change over time it shows how much more or less it costs to live so here the formula is inflation is the percentage increase in the uh, consumer price index or the cpi over a period of time now let us look into the next measure which is the produce price index which is the ppi here this mesh or wholesale price index this measures how much producers charge for goods before they are sold to shoppers like price at the wholesale level next is the core inflation rate here it focuses on the steady part of inflation by leaving out items like food and fuel whose prices can jump up and down a lot for example uh, so steady part can be known as the long term goods such as clothing household items uh, healthcare and so on whereas uh items like food and fuel are very inconsistent with their price rate and next is gdp deflator here uh, this measure in it measures inflation across everything made in the country here it compares how much uh, all goods and services cost now in nominal gdp called as the nominal gdp versus uh, what they would cost if the prices hadn't go- changed which is the real gdp it is nothing but nominal gdp is the total value of all goods and services produced in a country measured at current prices whereas real gdp is the total value of all goods and services but adjusted to remove the effect of inflation here it shows how an economy how much an economy is actually producing without the price change now we have seen the how inflation is measured next we will move on to types of inflation it might seem long but let me explain it to you in a more simpler terms first is the demand pull inflation here when too many people want to buy things but there there aren't goods enough to get around so the prices will be going high so that is the demand pull inflation next is the cost push inflation here uh, things became more expensive it becomes more expensive to make things uh, like higher cost for raw materials or wages so 
the businesses tries to raise the price of the cost next is the built in inflation here workers ask for higher wages to keep up with rising prices but here again it makes costlier to produce goods so prices even go up more a cycle that keeps repeating next is hyper inflation here prices rise so fast that the money loses its value very quickly and making everyday items very very expensive in a most ridiculous way next is the stagflation here a bad situation it's a very bad situation where prices keep rising but the economy isn't growing and many people are out of jobs so it ultimately leads to unemployment and final is the disinflation or the dis, uh, deflationary inflation here prices are still rising but they are rising more slowly than before not as same as prices going down so here again it's somewhat related to stagflation but in a more low uh, slower terms i hope that we have covered the basics of inflation so let us move on to a practice question which of these statements are correct regarding cpi wpn rbi's policy here the weightage of food in cpi is higher than in wpi uh, wpi does not capture changes in the prices of services which cpi does RBI uses WPA as its key measure for inflation and key policy rates. So, which of these statements are right? So, obviously, only the statement one and two are right. Now, moving on to the last article. The article highlights the dispute between Punjab and Haryana over Chandigarh, that is their shared capital. Here, Punjab opposes the centre's move to allot 10 acres in Chandigarh to Haryana for a new assembly building, asserting that its sole claim. over the city and haryana defends their rights uh, they are therefore reigniting tensions and linked water sharing conflicts also so in light of this article let us see what are the constitutional articles related to the shared capital first is the article 3 here article 3 of indian constitution empowers the parliament to create new states alter the existing state boundaries and change their state name so knowing the procedure first it should be introduced in parliament as a bill for any changes only with prior recommendation of the president of our india here the president must first refer the bill to the concerned state legislatures for their view so the state legislator is given at any time in any time frame to express their own opinions however the opinion of the state legislature is not binding on the parliament so once the bill is passed by parliament and uh, receives the president's assent or the order the changes will be coming into effect so looking into the limitations of this article the changes made under article 3 does not amount to any amendment in the constitution under article 368 so article 368 call, uh, talks about the constitutional amendment in general so now let us see few examples for article 3 in action first is the state of telangana which comes under the creation of new states here telangana it was carved out of andhra pradesh in 2014 next example would be chandigarh uttarakhand and jharkhand in 2000 here they were formed by reorganizing madhya pradesh uttar pradesh and bihar respectively and finally sikkim when it comes to state boundary changes here sikkim became a state in 1975 by altering its status from an associate state under the 35th amendment here changes to north and uh, north eastern states like arunachal pradesh mizoram meghalaya in 1970s and 1980s can be taken as example for state boundary changes now let us move on to the next article associated that is the article 239 this article talks about the administration of union territories of our indian constitution it provides the governance of these territories by the president of india where there is appointment uh, of an administrator or a manager through the president of india called the lieutenant governor so looking into the key, uh, key provisions of the article 239 the union territories are governed by the president of india who acts through an administrator here the administrator is appointed by the president and can be called by various titles like the lieutenant governor depending on the specific union territory so looking into the role of the administrator the administrator acts as the president's representative and is responsible for implementing 
central policies and laws in the union territories. The scope and powers of the administrator can vary based on the provisions made by parliament for a particular UT. So, it is mostly central based. So, under article 239, let us see the exclusion of certain UTs. Here, special provisions are made for certain union territories such as Delhi under article 239 AA and Puducherry or Pondicherry under Article 239 A, which have legislatures and chief ministers with limited legislative powers. Now, next associated constitutional act would be for this article would be Punjab Reorganization Act of 1966. So, having a foundation, this act was a landmark legislature passed by the Indian Parliament that led to the reorganization of the state of Punjab following the certain demands for separate state for Hindi speaking people in the region. Looking into the key provisions of the Punjab Reorganization Act, here it created the state of Haryana which was carved out of Punjab for Hindi speaking people. The boundaries of Haryana were defined based on linguistic demographies. Next is uh, Union Territory of Chandigarh. Chandigarh was declared as a Union Territory and was to serve the shared capital of Punjab and Haryana. The, administra uh, the administration of Chandigarh was placed under the central government. Next is the transfer of hill areas to Himachal Pradesh. So, certain hill areas of Punjab including districts like Kangra, Kulu, Lahal and Spiti and some parts of Ambala were transferred to Himachal Pradesh. And finally, having the divisions of assets and liabilities. So, here assets and liabilities and resources such as the government institutions, administrative offices, uh, financial assistance, uh, sorry, assets were divided between Punjab and Haryana based on certain criteria. So, this included water resources, electricity pro uh, projects and other shared infrastructures. Next is the Bakra Nangal project and Ravi Beast management. The control of the Bakra Nangal project and the Ravi Bees water system uh, was retained by the central government as there were critical for both the states. So, when it comes to high court, the Punjab court was converted into a common high court for Punjab, Haryana and Chandigarh known as the Punjab and Haryana high court uh, with its seat in the Chandigarh. So, in light of this article, let us see a prelims practice question. Article 3 of Indian Constitution empowers Parliament to create new states alt, uh, altering existing state boundaries and change state names. The second statement is a bill for such changes can be introduced in the Lok Sabha only with the prior recommendation of the President of India. The changes uh, made under Article 3 shall be considered as an amendment of the Constitution under Article 368. So, the correct statement would be only one. So, of course, we have seen for the bill, we need both the houses that is the parliament, um, the bill needs to be passed in the whole parliament and in the third sentence, of course, under article 368, it cannot be amended. So, only a first sentence is right. Thank you so much for watching this video. Do not forget to give a like, comment and a share and to further not to miss any other content, subscribe to our channel. Thank you and have a nice day.